Still within the rich text editor, what we're going to look at now is some of the more internet features. So let's go back into our editing mode and go to edit text. And what we're interested in now is this section of the uh, menu bar, the uh, anchor element or rather the web link element, then this anchor one here. Um, this section primarily, then we'll just look a little bit at uh, images and perhaps one or two of these other elements. So first of all, this. This is about adding a link. So let's say that we wanted to add a link to the Involve uh, website. Let's just add it in as a new element. I'm going to add in link to Involve as text. I then highlight that text and I click on the little chain or link um, icon that's in the header section. I click on that and up comes this little dialog. Now as you can see I can have different types of links and in a moment we'll look at uh, some of the other ones. It starts out with the protocol HTTP which is the standard one that we want. It's the uh, usual protocol for a web page and we just need to put in the address for Involve which is www dot in hyphen volve dot org dot uk and I now click OK and now you can see it's pasted the link in there if we update that here's our page and if I click link to involve there we are we've gone off to the involve website so that worked let's uh, go back into the edit mode and now what we're going to do is look at the uh, next thing here, which is the anchor. But first, before we do that, we don't actually want this link in this page. So let's use the remove link item. It's in the menu bar. If we highlight the link that we want, remove the link, it's now just normal text. Or we could, of course, just have deleted it like that. Now what we're going to do is add an anchor. And the idea with anchors is that you can create internal indexing within your document. So if we go down here to our bulleted list that we created earlier, let's add an anchor. I click on the anchor inside the menu bar and up comes a little modal dialog and I'm going to give it the name bullets. It might be section 1, section 2, section 3, whatever you're going to call the uh, sections within your document. We click OK and we get this little anchor icon. Now that doesn't do anything on its own. If I just publish this by clicking the update button, there is no visual difference to the page from clicking on the anchor. In order to make it meaningful, whoops, clicked on the wrong thing there, let me go back up, cancel out of that, go into edit text. In order to make it meaningful, what we need to do is add an index. So let's up here put a link to bullets. I highlight that, I click on link, and you see where it says link type URL. What I'm going to do is change that to point at link to anchor in the text. So link to anchor in the text by the name. The name is already there. It knows the anchors in the document. So I can click the only one that we did, bullets. I click OK. And now I have a little internal link. So if I update this. Now if I click on bullets we go down to that element within the document. So what anchors allow you to do is create internal um, anchors, internal indexes within a document to allow navigation within a large um, document. Okay, If we go back into um, the edit mode the next thing as we move along is images, where we can insert or edit images. We already saw how that works by bringing in a template, and if we add another image uh, into this document, we get the same kind of approach. We can browse the server to find the relevant image. We can pick from the existing images. This, by the way, is a link off to another folder. And what we will probably do for the real application is add a separate folder for the images that we upload. And then you would go into that folder to find the specific image. I'll just bring down the same image again, you can see, and uh, add a little bit of text. I won't bother with it. Uh, 
saying image in there because that would be inappropriate. I will just say Dino and Jones again. I say portrait this time for variety. And I click OK and it just inserts the image in the text. So that's very straightforward. Um, we could of course set height and width and various other properties if we wish to. If you have a, a flash animation you can insert that in the same way. And you can also add tables. So if we wanted to add a table to this document we could just insert a table and we get to choose how wide it is. Generally not a good idea to use pixels because they're an absolute size. Percentage is generally better. So let's say a width of 50% of the uh, available space. Uh, let's say two rows, two columns, a border size of one with left alignment. We don't want a caption and the summary would just be a description of what's inside the table that's not actually visible. The summary would be just for um, people again with visual impairment it would be information for their screen reading tools. The caption would actually be visible if we wanted to use it. So for summary I'll just say a uh, book list and click OK and we now have this little table appearing inside it. Uh, if I don't want that to be wrapping I can get rid of the text around it and I could also reset that uh, alignment if I go to um, the properties of the table instead of aligning it left I could align it center so I now have a little uh, book list table and let me see Archer's Goon is an excellent uh, Dino and Jones book um, 8 Days of Luke is another one and then there's Cart and Quidder and um, Howl's Moving Castle. There, a few book recommendations for you as well. So, um, you can put tables in there. We could also have, have made this a header element. We could have made it bold and centered it. So, you know, you can play around with lots of, of formatting to create the exact look um, that you're going for. As we look further along, we have horizontal lines that we can insert like that. Um, just allow us to break our document up. We can insert smileys which I, I think is probably not going to be relevant from your point of view but you can put in these standard kind of uh, emoticon type things. We can put in special characters so if you needed something that was non-standard and accent you can pick it from outside of this list like that for example the euro symbol. Uh, and we could theoretically put in page breaks, but I don't think that's going to be relevant from our point of view. And I think I'll stop at that point and maybe consider the next row um, in another little video.